With the release of the O4 Air unit, we finally received an update for the goggles G2, G3, and N3, all of which are compatible with the O3 and O4 Air units. What's important to note here is that this update not only gave us compatibility with the O4 Air unit, but also updated the Betafy font set that was on the goggles. Previously, DJI had decided to use an old font and mix old fonts with new fonts, etc. And it just didn't work out. It didn't match either what Betaflight had, and it definitely didn't match what INAF had. This is why we had the issue with the question marks. Now, previously, I resolved that issue by just replacing icons with something that made sense, more or less, so that it's kind of usable. But finally, with the release of the O4 uh, firmware for the goggles, DJI have updated their entire Betaflight font to match what Betaflight is using today. In other words, we now have something more that we can use in INAF. For example, we previously didn't have kilometers. I replaced kilometers with a K uh, because I knew that that's what the value is that I'm looking at. However, INAV developers didn't quite like that, and so that never made it into a final release. Maybe we'll see some improvements in the future now that we have some more icons that we can use. And on the screen, you can see what the differences were between the O3 firmware as well as the O4 firmware, which is now basically fully compatible with Betaflight. So let's have a look at what's changed for the um, INAF 8 OSD. You can see that we finally have a little logo for the link quality at the top left. We also have the correct home location or home distance icon, which is a little house in the top right. And underneath that, we no longer have to use the RPM symbol, but instead we have a circle with an arrow that kind of looks like that's our round trip distance. We can also replace the kilometer logo, which in the event that you are interested in your efficiency, you can see under the milliamp hours E, what was there before, and now is milliamp hours KM, showing that it's milliamp hours per kilometer. Now I'm missing the slash, which is in beta flight already, but maybe I'll work on that at some point in the future. Um, some of the things that I've also changed in all of this were I've removed the logo completely from the uh, power sign. So the milliwatts no longer blink as they would have if you had used any, any text, essentially, just next to the number. And I've kind of done my best to make sure that it's a good experience, right? It's not the best experience, but let's just say... It's not bad at all. Um, and it's much improved to what it was previously. So can't complain about that. Now, for those of you who might be wondering how you can get your hands on this firmware, essentially it will be in the link in the description. And all you have to do is go into the firmware folder and then you can choose. Now, for release candidate four, I have two options. If you're using the O3 firmware, meaning you cannot select the O4 Air Unit or O4 Air Unit Pro in your goggles, then this is what you go for, okay? You go in here, you choose whatever flight controller you use and is compatible with INAV8, and there you go. If you're using the O4 Air Unit or O4 in general, then this is the thing that you should be looking at. However, Keep in mind, this is just for the goggles. If you use the O4 Air unit itself, then it needs a slight workaround, which people are already working on, but I have not implemented yet because it is not in a release candidate. If it were in a release candidate 5, for example, then you can go back to the firmware folder and you will find release candidate 5. Now, if you're interested at what changes I've done, you can go into the build files and you can find right here these are the three files that i've changed 
that I've updated so that they work a little bit better for us. Not necessarily for everybody, but just for those who are using Goggles 2, Goggles 3, and Goggles M3. Um, if you want my exact OSD, then you can choose between those two files. This is for INAV 7, the other one is for INAV 8, and you can just download the file, copy all these into uh, your uh, INAV CLI, press enter, and you will have the exact same thing that you saw in this video. When we look at what things have changed for Betaflight, well now everything is as it should. The speed icon is now properly the correct speed icon. It's not what it used to be, which was something completely random. You can see that in one of the videos, it's showing the on HR icon, which is obviously wrong and shouldn't be there. Um, it, it should have been the speed icon all along. Again, same goes for the home and the uh, round trip distance, which you can see uh, there as well. All in all, there are quite a few improvements. I think they're not worthless improvements. I think they are still kind of useful improvements. And I do hope that iNav developers will have a look at this video and potentially get something useful out of it for iNav 8. I'm sure that they're working on something already, but just in case, this at least gives some visual experience of what the OSD could look like with some changes implemented. Having said that, I think that DJI made a huge mistake in not providing us with an iNav OSD with the release of the O4 Air unit. I've purchased two units and I'm very disappointed that even though it was inferred and indirectly promised that we will get support for the O4 Air unit with iNav, that wasn't the case. And so I will be using O3. On my Betaflight quads, I will most likely install at least one of those O4 Air units. And I'll put a video up on that with daytime, nighttime flying, etc. Just so you can see what it looks like. But it won't be anything much different than what you've seen previously. In either case, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope that DJI does give us an INAV font that we can use. So we don't have to look at workarounds. We don't have to fix icons. I don't have to waste my time building firmware. Until then, I will be building firmware. And you will have the links, as always in the video description. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching.